You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that is as force sensitive as Baby Yoda and twice as cute. I'm Sam. And I'm Josh. Uh, we have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a bunch of news to go over, but first let's talk about some things we've been checking out. And, and you I, nailed it. I nailed it. I nailed the intro in one. <laughs> Mark it in the record books. In the Yeah, give me a tally. Scratch. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, hey, so let's start talking about The Mandalorian. So, yeah, uh, in case you've been living under a rock, Disney Plus came out with their pretty much their entire catalog of movies you've seen a thousand times and never get tired of. And also Mr. Boogity. Yeah. <laughs> and some of their original content, mm -hmm. like the new live action Star Wars TV show, The Mandalorian. Right. Last week, we mentioned it very briefly. I think in both our segment and the segment the segment with uh, Cody and Samantha. Uh, but now that we've actually watched a couple episodes, and it's been a few weeks, mm -hmm. uh, we're actually going to talk a little bit about the show. We might get into a, uh, some light spoilers. We're only going to talk about the first two episodes. Yes. Third one's out today. As, as of recording. Yes. Uh, but we're, we're not talking about that. So if you're not totally 100% caught up, we're fine. Or if you don't have Disney Plus, what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's $7. It's not. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. So yeah, Mandalorian. I love oh, this show. Oh my God. I, I'm going to say it's possibly one of the best things to happen to Star Wars since like Rogue One. I agree. Yeah, I, I would say so. I mean, I... I, I think I'm in the minority where I still like the the mainline, you know. I mean, I do, I do, I do too. Yeah, I love those. I mean, if it wasn't for, well, I mean, a seven eight nine, yeah, yeah, I like those too. Prequels as well. I, I like the the prequels. There are, there are parts in the prequels I like. Yes, yeah, um, I'll give you that. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of elements in there that could have been great mm -hmm. um, if they would have utilized them better or told yeah. or told a more believable story sure sure but uh anyway let's the talk about let's talk about the mandalorian so it takes place five years after the empire has fallen yeah so five years after return of the jedi i think it's five years i can't remember if it was three or five mm -hmm. uh you're it's on a most of it somewhat it seemed is on a i guess there's a bunch of desert planets in star wars man <laughs> it's an easy it's an easy uh place to film yeah. and place to to find to, to shoot film and it's supposed to harken back to like tatooine kind of actually i think the one planet is tatooine i think so as well but yeah we'll get into that mm -hmm. so episode one starts off uh well on a snow planet yeah i i, I don't want to go through like yeah. every you know well, shot for shot yeah, or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. like that but uh um, man it it is it opens up beautifully yes and i'm gonna i'm gonna say the mandalorian is probably the one of the greatest modern westerns to come out in a while. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It is. It has very much a lot of the uh, western and like spaghetti western. Oh yeah, trappings. There's for so, sure. Like the music, mm -hmm. the way they frame certain shots. Yeah, uh, the Mandalorian himself, the protagonist, is mm -hmm. is a. I don't want to say a silent protagonist, but he's definitely uh, a man of few man words. of few words. Yeah, he's def he's definitely not holding converse like long conversations with people he's very to the point yes i think it's i mean the the cast of side characters um they don't really stick around for too terribly long mm -mm. and that and i kind of like that i was a little worried at first you were about to talk a little bit about the intro scene on the mm -hmm, ice planet mm -hmm. it's the mandalorian who doesn't have a name which is also great although i i'm guessing he might well soon most anybody who who talks to him refer to him either as the Mandalorian mm -hmm. or the uh the head of the Bounty Hunters Guild calls him Mando. Mando, yeah. So um the show starts with him picking up a bounty mm -hmm. which uh was played by Horatio Sands. Did yeah. You know that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I was a little worried at first because it was like almost setting it up like, oh here's the silent protagonist and his goofy wacky talking buddy. Oh yeah, because he was like just like talking up a storm and mm -hmm. like saying all kinds of things like you know like i was going to life day you know to go see my kids which is great because that means the star wars holiday special is now canon 
Mm-hmm. First mention of Life Day outside of the holiday special. Yep. And here's the other thing about all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and I sent it to you in text, but there was a I found a picture of Boba Fett in his first appearance yes. in the Star Wars holiday special. Yeah. And he looks just like the Mandalorian in the TV show. Yes. With and the, the gray armor and the forked rifle. And, mm-hmm. the, and the, uh, the alien that he rides later in the episode was designed specifically to harken back mm-hmm. to that, that original cartoon as well. That's yep. something, that's something else about the Mandalorian. I really like, there are a lot of references. Mm-hmm. If you know what you're looking at, but they're not like beating you over the head with it. Oh no, 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 no. It, it's not like, uh, they're not like poking you going, Hey, Hey, do you see it? Mm-hmm. Are, are you going to clap? Are you going to clap when you see it? Yeah, it's it's not like uh, you know, like Ready Player One or something where like it just clobbers you with it. Where it, the show very well could have under under different directors and different writers, it absolutely like if this was written by the guys that do that do. Solo. Um, I was going to say Star Trek Discovery because oh, yeah. I guess that would be the closest comparison to the Mandalorian. I would say because mm, it's yeah. it's more modern filmmaking style of a you know a previously established space franchise but where the mandalorian doesn't you know has things if you know what they are but doesn't beat you over the head with them and you can enjoy them without star trek discovery is like hey here's spock (laughs) do you remember spock hey here's some klingons yeah (laughs) but yeah i mean i i love the mandalorian so much Mm -hmm. and now the line that darth vader told says to boba fett in the Empire Strikes Back, it makes sense now because mm-hmm. he says no disintegrations. What does that mean? Well, Mandalorians have a stupid rifle. Oh yeah, that yep. instantly turns things to dust. Yeah, I am looking forward to seeing more of uh, the Mandalorian races, like lifestyle and like that kind of that kind of thing. I mean, you because haven't watched the new episode, and I have. I haven't. Uh, we got a taste of it in the first episode where he meets with, like, the elder or chieftain. I think they call her the armorer. I'm not... The, uh, they... So far, of his interaction with him, Well, with either with himself or the other Mandalorian characters in the Enclave, mm-hmm. they never reference each other by a name or they a don't. title. And I think it's not so much about their names, it's about their symbols. Right, because she mentions to him about what you know, wanting to give him his uh, uh, signet, his signet, yeah, yeah, um, and because he doesn't have one, right. I also like the the idea that they uh they wear their wealth. Well, actually, specifically, their the money from their that, that's not their money. Oh, it's not. What is it then? It's a it's a special kind of metal alloy that was uh that was like their like their calling card. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's it's their um the best the best car or best, something. Yeah, the best car steel. Yeah. It's that's their thing. It's it's okay. a Mandalorian product. Okay, that must be explained in the third episode then. Not really sort oh, of, okay. but not. Cuz I thought it was like they were he was paid in some of their like old-time money. No, and he was like... paid in their steel which has been lost. Ah, okay. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, it's, it's definitely a cultural thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, they definitely touch on it a little more mm. in the, uh, in the third episode. Okay. Well, uh, jumping back, I know we're kind of jumping all over oh, the place with it's this It's so thing. hard though. Cause the show is so good. It's there's so, so good. And there's so many good lines. Yeah. And so many good visuals and it's hard to convey in a audio format. <laughs> it, it really is. Yeah. I mean, the best way to, to take this in is to actually yeah, just watch, watch, watch the, the show. show. But uh, I like some of the, I don't, they're not really celebrity guests, but they're kind of like pseudo celebrity. Like you could tell Nick Nolte has more of a part than I thought he was going to. I really Um, liked his character. Yeah, I did too. Taika Waititi as IG-11. Mm-hmm. Man, that scene was great. Oh yeah, that was very good. Like, I know. But another scene where I was kind of worried, oh no, he's going to have a wisecracking goofy sidekick. We already had a droid like that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and that was in Rogue One. Yes. Oh, I love that droid, though. Mm-hmm. He was the best. Yep. But yeah, he um, the IG-11 droid was a lot of fun. Yeah. And it worked pretty much exactly as I have always read IG-88 to be like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brian Bosain was in that one real brief moment on the first episode. He was the speeder bike driver. Oh, <laughs> yeah yeah when it when he uh, uh when the mandalorian says no droids yeah and the the nice shiny 
speeder drives off. It's driven by a droid, and then he shows up in his beater. His beater that looks an awful lot like uh, Luke's speeder. speeder. It's definitely an old speeder. Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of dancing around it. Um, The main thrust of the series is... The m- here's the spoiler part. Here's the spoiler part. I'm pretty part. sure Facebook has already got you of this. Yeah, if because you're... it's been all over. Yeah, it's kind of that's slight sidebar. I kind of lament the advent of social media. Mm-hmm. You know, I usually don't worry about like, oh, spoiler, whatever. You know, who cares? But like, this is one thing that's it's it's super cool. Yeah, and, like, and it people was are getting it wasn't on it. it wasn't in the trailers or anything. Yeah, it was like oh. Out of left field, like boom. Yeah, we're talking about a like a baby Yoda or yeah. a baby Yoda species. Species. Yep. Yeah. Which I have some theories about. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have any theories about it or not. Um. So the idea in the first episode is uh the Mando Mando pulls gets a uh, a bounty for they he doesn't have a name the the bounty doesn't have a name or a picture card or anything like that hollow disc or whatever it they is called a puck they call it a puck yeah. But uh, all they know is that it's 50 years old. And here's a tracker that tracks its biological si- right. signature. And because Yoda's race live, you know, forever. Yoda was 900 years old when he died. Mm-hmm. Like 50 years old means baby, basically. <laughs> so he gets it, he gets through this compound and finds a baby Yoda, essentially. I'm just going to call it a baby Yoda because Yoda's race doesn't have a name. Yeah, and we've seen a couple other of his race, but the Yaddle. It, yeah, there was Yaddle, who is never v- mentioned by name sure. in the movies. Sure. Uh, and you only see her for like a split second in like episode one. Yeah, very, very briefly. Yeah. And then there was Master Vandar in mm. the Knights of the Republic game. Right. But yeah, my theory is the, um, you know, the Clone Wars happened roughly 50 years prior to the first episode of the Mandalorian, give or take 50 years, 50. Yeah. No. That would put, yeah. Between. Okay. Between the end of the clone wars mm-hmm. and the beginning of episode four. Yeah. Luke is like 18. Okay. Well, I guess that timeline doesn't work out. My, my theory was the cloners from Camino when Yoda came to pick up the clone soldiers in attack of the clones somehow got part of his DNA. I mean, Yoda was in a bunch of fights. Yeah, you know, during the during the ensuing chaos of the initiation of the Clone War and the Clone War itself. Sure. Plus his fight with Palpatine. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my theory is that they somehow worked that that it's not a full blown like oh it's just another Yoda race. It's like an actual like I kind of hope clone it's, thing. I kind of hope it's not a clone of Yoda. Okay. I mean, I kind of hope it's just uh maybe Yoda's race is just really rare. Yeah, that could be. Or maybe it's the child of Yoda and Yaddle. Uh, well, well, no, because you're not supposed no. to have emotional attachments when you're a Jedi yeah, master. Yeah, don't know about that. I mean, I mean that this popped in my head. It's not exactly like the thing I'm holding on to. Sure, sure. But I know I'm kind of hoping it's not a clone of Yoda. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, it's a neat. It's definitely a plot. It's something we haven't seen before. That we haven't seen before. Yeah, that's very true. And even at 50 years old, as a weird infant weird space baby he does have the ability to use the force he's pretty strong with the force yeah Mm -hmm. yeah um i am really excited to see where the series goes i'm glad it's a mat it's a mini series and not like an ongoing kind Mm -hmm. of thing i mean i definitely want to see more i mean they'll do more of it down the line but like and you know what for half hour episodes they fit a lot of meaty stuff in there they do yes they do well, that first episode's like an hour long. Is it? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, the next one was a half hour and the third one's a half hour. Oh, okay. So. Cool. But still, they fit a lot of stuff in. You're right. And I just like the idea of it being a mini series so that it has a set beginning, middle, and end. Mm-hmm. Because the last thing you'd want is a show as good as Mandalorian to drag end on. Up becoming like, yeah, just drag and end up five seasons down the line where they're kind of coming up with whatever i mean don't get me wrong i've always been a real big boba fett fan and mandalorians in general from like the eu and whatnot sure yeah i think it's i think it's enough to satiate that need i have for that type of character yeah yeah like i don't need i don't even want them to explain everything oh i don't either i just want it i I just want them to tell this cool story with this cool gunslinger yep oh man yeah and then there's like the flashbacks of like 
of him as a kid. Brief glimpses here and there. I'm guessing there's more in the third episode. There's a slightly longer one. Okay. And it actually makes the droid army not look stupid. Oh, that's difficult to believe. I know, right? But yeah, but like you kind of you see like a super battle droid in like episode two, I think. Oh yeah, okay, like in, a, sure. in, in the flashback. Yeah, yeah. And then you see it a slight, slightly better in the, uh, the third one. Okay. Uh, but uh, that's been a, that is a theory on why the Mando does not like droids. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Well, hey, uh, let's uh, switch gears and talk about another thing that we've both been kind of checking out. Um, so Pokemon Sword and Shield dropped last week yep. or last week two friday. weeks friday last, a week ago friday so yes. it's been a week yes and uh we both had a chance to play it uh i haven't been in it in a, that long <laughs> that long okay i'm past the second gym so oh, you're a way farther than me <laughs> i'm i'm a little ways into it so what are your uh Im- first impressions um it doesn't seem bad okay um the environments are very detailed and interesting mm-hmm. it actually feels like it has a landscape and not just I mean, they're, they're, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of flat space of tall grass, but sure, it definitely feels more stylized than past Pokemon entries. I think. Ah, uh, yeah, I could, I could see that. I, I like it so far. I haven't been a hundred percent wowed yet. Oh no, no, definitely not. But I've been enjoying it. Um, I like the idea of the wild area, the big open world kind of mm-hmm. hub where you can play with. Well, other not players. exactly hub, but it's like a big kind of open area. It's like an instance where you can meet other players. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had a chance to do any of the like the wild raid battles or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I do like the what they brought over from uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, where you can actually see the random encounters mm-hmm. on the map, so that. You know, it's going to make finding shinies easier. Or if you want a particular Pokemon. Or if you're trying to just g- avoid things and get <laughs> yeah. to the next town so you yeah. can save and be, be done. Because I find I find these days I will play the game and I'm like fighting everything, fighting everything, you know, getting XP, doing all this and that. And then around the time that I start going, I just... I just get me to the town so I can heal and I'm done. And that's usually about an hour and a half in is when I'll go, I think I'm going to put this down because I, I'm not wanting the tedium anymore. Yeah. Um, which I guess is a good kind of timer, I guess. I mean, it's kind of, you know, yeah. planned out that way. The towns look, the graphics look very nice for it being a handheld and, uh, you know, upscaled to a television uh, game. But some of the town layouts are a little... They look nice because there's a lot of window dressing in the background. Mm -hmm. Like the first gym town, it's basically just the Pokemon healing center and the gym. And there's a bunch of houses in the background and it looks like you can go all the way back and do all these things, but it's all blocked off. So it's just like, so it's a lot of window dressing for not a lot of like air, you know, room to kind of move around. Those are nitpicks. Yeah. It's kind of nitpicks. I'm also kind of sad uh, there's no voice acting. If, if the other games had had voice acting, yeah, but this and is then the, they rolled it back. But this is the first time we've had a, like a console console Pokemon game. Game Freak, nah. they're <laughs> they are used to designing for handheld systems more than anything. I feel, and Cody would probably argue with me on that a little bit, uh, but he's not here, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> So I, I I feel that they are that the that the team that they have working on this game uh, is more geared toward is still on the uh, working on a handheld mindset, which is totally fine. It's totally valid. I find that while I like the novelty of being able to play Pokemon on the TV, I and I like playing my Switch on my TV more than in handheld mode. I play Pokemon in handheld mode more than anything. And you think it's maybe because it's like. That's what your like brain is used to. That could be part of it. It could be that a lot of a, a lot of Pokemon and a lot of RPG games in general, it's a lot of grinding and a lot of just mindless tedium to kind of you mm-hmm. know get up to where you're supposed to be. Yeah, level wise, and it's easier to do that in handheld mode when you have something go playing in the background and you can just kind of like do a couple fights here and there, and set it down, get up, you know run the vacuum, do whatever, yeah. pick it up, play a little bit, put it down, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Where if you're on the TV, it's taking up your entire, you know, TV. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise, I'm kind, I'm enjoying it. I, 
I keep having to remind myself that this is a game for kids. Yes. Because I understand the reason behind the the reason why they gave you your your friend your friendly rival character that is basically holding your hand and walking you through the first little bit of the game. Mm-hmm. And according to Cody, who is further along than both of us, the character ends up with kind of a story arc, and which is something that doesn't usually happen in Pokemon games. So I'm sure that the character gets better as the game progresses, but I get kind of tired of being talked down to in a Pokemon game. <laughs> I wish there was like, this sounds elitist and kind of weird. I understand, but I wish there was like, not like hard mode, but when you start up the game, I wish there was a thing to say. I've played a Pokemon I've played game a before. Pokemon game before. Maybe you don't have to walk me through everything. Yeah, and they do a little bit of that. I showed up uh, to the uh, catching tutorial, already had been caught like five or six things, and the the person goes, "Oh, it looks like you've already figured this out." Well, great. Uh, the same thing happened with me. Yeah. In, in a battle, and I used a a super effective type. Yeah. Attack. And they're like, oh, you already know type matchups? You know these things already. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I've been playing these for the last 25 years. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, like I said, it's not a bad game. I like like I like the designs of some of the new Pokemon. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm enjoying the new Pokemon. I'm finding that I'm not missing the old ones as much. I do kind of miss the idea of catching some of the originals. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I've heard that some folks have data mined the game and there's a lot of models for like Bulbasaur mm. and Squirt, like fully working versions of Bulbasaur and Squirtle and Mewtwo and all those already in there. So it's chances are they're going to be like special event kind of things like, Hey, everybody, you can catch, you can catch a Bulbasaur and a, and a wild raid for the next week or two. Yeah. One thing I am kind of glad they got rid of was the catching mechanic from Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. That was a neat gimmick for that game, but I don't think it would work in a mainline game. Yeah, yeah I mean, I it's basically playing adventure mode Pokemon Go at that point. Yeah, and that was the point of uh, oh, yeah. Let's Go. Yeah. Was it was supposed to be bridge the gap between Go players and... Pokemon players. Pokemon, regular mainline Pokemon players. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but the fact that you just take the Pokeball and you throw it. Mm-hmm. Boom. That's what I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the... Uh, um, shortcut for the pokeballs in this game where you don't have to open up the menu every single time you can actually just press x and it just oh i didn't know that yeah yeah there's yeah because when you do the catch tutorial like leon's like you go here and then you go here and then you select this and then you go or you can just press x and it'll be like oh hey this is the last one you used use it again great (laughs) all right piece of cake um but yeah it's not a bad game I definitely think uh, the regional variants of already existing Pokemon are going to basically be the thing for like the rest of forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does it does help keep one. It helps keep the designers having to come up with a brand new Pokemon every time. Sure. Uh, even though the regional types do look different and actually have different abilities and types mm-hmm. than their original versions or previous versions. Yeah. Uh, because Meowth, like Meowth has one and Meowth had one the last game. Yeah. So this will, there are three different styles of Meowth. Yeah. There's original, there's sassy purple Hawaiian cat. And then there's you. Yes. And then there's me. (laughs) Viking Meowth. I actually named my, my, uh, Galarian, uh, Meowth Grim. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Because yes. Oh man. I want Berserker so bad. Berserker looks pretty great. Meowth with swords. Yep. Hey, you're going to trade me a a Farfetch'd, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, (laughs) Just making sure we get that on on, on recording. As soon as I get one. Uh, Fair, that's fair. (laughs) Because I know you want a Sir Sir Farfetch'd. Oh, Sir Fetched is the best. Yeah, I know, right? He's the best Pokemon. He is is cocky, and Mm -hmm. he's got a a leak stick, and he's going to hit you with it. Oh, yeah, it's great. Uh, (laughs) Let's see. Yeah, I'm not terribly far in Pokemon. I really need to get back into it. I'm... I'm going to take my time on this one. I'm not going to rush through it. Oh, I don't want to rush on it either. But like I said, I'm I'm not even to the first gym. Yeah. I've actually heard a lot of the uh, post game is uh, really good. And it's going to have a lot of like evergreen. (laughs) Evergreen is not the term I would use. I almost used it, but then I backtracked. But (laughs) like it has a pretty substantial post game. Like, so there's a lot of things to do after you beat the 
the, t- the story the story mode okay i mean i feel like you have to do something like that because then at after this that, point you're just like mm, okay yeah either you're training for like uh online fights online fights or trying to catch catch them all or what have you yeah or wait till uh i don't know holy sword and defiant shield come out <laughs> <laughs> whatever the, whatever the next version they're gonna call it ah yeah i who knows we're well we're at least two years out from that anyway so, yeah. yeah yeah i kind of forgot that like that's kind of what they do because mm-hmm. i was talking to matt and he's like man this is what happens when a pokemon game comes out every year and i'm like a pokemon game doesn't come out every year it's like every two years every and two then years. i looked at when uh when let's go pikachu and eevee came out and i'm like it was oh, last that year. was last year yeah this time oh. this time last year ah crud <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well hey let's go ahead and take a break here and when we come back we'll uh, talk about some more stuff somebody stop me <laughs> that was cuban pete uh by desi arnez but as sung by jim carrey yeah. <laughs> i think we played this song specifically because cody would have said no <laughs> <laughs> or right. he might have said yes hey, you know you never know so hey why did we play that song josh well there's a <laughs> There's a smoking theory uh, or a rumor out there that they are possibly working on a mask sequel starring Jim Carrey. Wait, I thought I thought that exists. I thought it was Son of Mask. <laughs> no, that, never see Son of Mask. No, that that movie belongs in the uh, ET Atari dump. Uh, <laughs> with Superman 64. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. All bad. All of it's bad. That deserves to be tossed into the Edge City River, never to be seen again. <laughs> but yeah, so there's so there are rumors of a mask too. So I I have very conflicting thoughts on this, honestly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um part of me is super excited because I remember as a kid loving the mask. The mask was peak nineties Jim Carrey. Yes. Well, Ace Ventura was peak 90s Jim Carrey. This was this was around that time, though. This came like right in between Ace Ventura and When Nature Calls. It was like right there in, in between. And then there was Batman was in there somewhere, too. Batman was in there as well. Yeah. But like he's virtually the same character in all the films. Pretty much there for a while. Well, he, yeah, he was very typecast. Yes. But there is a part of me that is very excited to hear about the mask, too. Mm hmm. Have you gone back and watched the first mask? It has recently? been a very long time. Go back and watch it. I was, well, not much shocks me, but I was very surprised at the amount of like crude humor, crude, not like child friendly humor in that movie. And I remember being a little kid going, man, like, this is great. I love this. What's with that weird balloon he pulled out of his pocket? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like the it's like that scene in Coneheads. Yeah, pretty much. It never made sense to me until I got older. Yep, exactly. But uh, the other part of me is like thinking it, the window for a mask to to be culturally relevant. I'm pretty sure that is go- is like 20 years removed. Do you remember the mask cartoon? I do remember the mask cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I forget who did the voice of of uh, the mask. Yeah, was it was it Rob Paulson? I mean, at that time, probably. I it mean, could, even to this day, Rob Paulson still does so much. He he does a lot, but I I'm just I'm just confused. More than more than con- I I wouldn't say concerned. I'm confused. Why now? Well, I just had this thought actually, like literally just now. So going back and watching the new Sonic trailer, the couple oh, times yeah, that I have. Okay, now, sure. There are a few elements in that trailer where it feels like Jim Carrey is kind of tapping back into his the wacky into his old style yes not his like you know i'm an actor style now versus (laughs) not the number 23 jim carrey yeah or that's a terrible movie by the way i hate that movie oh i saw that in theaters me too super bad but (laughs) but yeah you know you're you're right you're right there was it was very vintage jim carrey-esque uh the Dr. Robotnik in the Sonic trailer. And maybe it's him like, you know, he's, he does his art projects. Mm-hmm. He does his art. He does his serious films from time to time. He's maybe that's, maybe this is like one of those one for you, one for me kind of deals where like, I'll be wacky in this one and then I'll do one for myself here. And then I'll make my money on, on mask two. And then I'll do like some indie film, indie film, like back and forth. So the mask, 
TV show, the cartoon, the NBA yes. series, uh, Rob Paulson was the voice of the mask. Yes! Nailed it! And Frank Welker's in it, too. Oh, really? Was I bet he was the voice of Milo. Yup. Yeah, because it's Frank Welker, and if you're an an- if there's an animal, a non-speaking animal in a cartoon, chances are it's Frank Welker. Uh, apparently there was a mask film in 2017? Oof. That doesn't make sense. I don't recognize that. No, and also, it, sure, it might. Are, are you it, okay? Are you might. talking about Mask? Oh no! Oh, that looks like a fan film. It looks like an adult film. Um, that. Oh yeah, no, that is like someone's like failed Kickstarter Indiegogo project. Well, it was on IMDb. Well, yeah, a lot of things end up on IMDb. There, that is true. Yeah. Anyway, I've, I, th- I. This is going to sound weird, but like if the script is right and it's able to kind of capture that original mask kind of thing, uh, I would be interested in seeing where the characters go. And if nothing else, it's going to be a massive train wreck, if nothing else. And we could sit back and laugh at the unintentional hilarity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I hate nostalgia grabs. Yes, but our society and our media on it. is driven by it. It's just kind of the way it is. If it's not a superhero movie these days, it is... Technically, The Mask is a superhero film. Technically, yes. He is. A, he was a comic character. Yeah, but like, we're getting another <laughs> Ghostbusters movie. Mm-hmm. We're getting... Oh, jeez. Like, I w- you know, I'm not going to look up the list, but I imagine there is a very long list of, like, properties that are remakes and rehashes and reimaginings of... Do you remember the 80s and 90s? <laughs> You're going to watch this because remember it? Our our media has become Portland. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the dream of the 90s is alive in Portland. It's alive in Port- Portland. And it's going to be alive in the theaters when Mask 2 If hits. it happens. If it happens. Yeah. It, it, right now, it's just a rumor. There's no confirmation. Right. Jim Carrey's not saying, yes, I'm doing this. Or not. He's not even saying, I'm not doing this. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll I'll go see it. I'll I'll go to the cheap theater. I'll spend five bucks. Yeah, I mean, curiosity. Curiosity of nothing else, yeah. I mean, we've paid more money for worse movies. Yes, we have. Well, can't really say it's going to be worse because we haven't seen it, but... Right, yeah, can't judge it until we see it, but still. <laughs> as long as it's better than the first Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtles movie. <sighs> Setting the bar nice and low. Yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> God, it, it is... It has been a while since you and I walked out of a film that angry. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that, was, that whole day was bad. That was but... a bad day to be just in general, but like, <laughs> the movie didn't help. <laughs> no, it did not. Uh, all right, so hey, let's talk about, um, we're going to jump back to that uh, uh, Pokemon uh, thing. So there was, a, this is actually kind of a tech news thing. We don't cover a lot of tech news. It's in our intro. We used to talk a lot about tech news, but this is kind of a... Uh, technical thing that still ties into the pokemons <laughs> something that i have firsthand experience with as it turns out so the new pokemon sword and shield because of how it is on the switch one of the features is, like we mentioned was the wild area where you can meet up with other players local players and players from online uh to do like raid battles and see mm-hmm. their little avatars run around and all that stuff and it's pretty cute it's you know it it works it's fine but there is a real interesting kind of unforeseen bug with that. And it is happening to a very specific set of people. It's happening with people who own multiple Rokus. Now, Roku, if it's the, the TV, like it turns your TV into a smart TV. It's like a aggregator for like Netflix a lot of, a lot of and, different apps and things. Yeah. Too. It's it's kind of like the the Chrome, the Chromecast or like Fire Stick, Fire Stick that sort of thing. It's. That's that's what it is. It's one of the, it's actually one of the first ones. Yeah. So we're going to get a little technical here. So the Pokémon Sword and Shield, when it's when you're in the wild area, it uh sends out a Bluetooth a ping over Bluetooth looking for not just online players, but like local players so that if like you're other sitting players on switches. So like if you're sitting next to your friend on the switch, it'll just automatically connect you guys both to the same area basically without having to press a button or anything like that. It just kind of sends out a nice ping, and that's, you know, it's it's kind of a neat feature. As it turns out, it is using the same frequency 
that Roku's use to push updates from one box to another. So if you have multiple Roku's in your household and you're using Pokemon and go to the wild area at the same time, it confuses the Roku to the point where it needs a factory reset. Now, there is an article on, or there have been articles on this online, but like I said, I had first firsthand experience in this <laughs> uh, because last Saturday we were watching something on Disney Plus. What was it? Oh, it's like a Christmas movie. Oh, I think it was called Noel. Oh yeah, with, I've, uh, heard, I've, Ken- I've, heard, I've heard I've heard it's good. Anna Kendrick. Eh, you know what? For the first for the twenty or thirty minutes that we watched, that we were able to watch, it was great. And then it bricked my Roku <laughs> super hard to the point where it could not restart. And I had to like get a paper clip and like factory reset the thing to the point where I had to reinstall all my Stuff. channels and put passwords back in and the whole nine yards. Would you say it was super effective? It w- Yes. Pokemon attacked the Roku. It was super effective. One hit KO. But so this is a non-issue now. It's the Roku's have um, pushed out an update onto their systems that that takes care of the issue. So um, it shouldn't happen to any more people. But for a very specific (laughs) number of people for a very specific short amount of time, Sam, uh, me, (laughs) uh, yeah, Pokemon, uh, my Switch was at war with my Roku, and the Switch won. Flawless victory. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Josh, why don't you pick one? So speaking of nostalgia bait. Yeah, let's do it. So it's been, we've covered before that Amazon is producing a, you know, in the void that Game of Thrones has left, a Lord of the Rings t- TV show. For, okay. Yeah. For Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever actually covered it. It's been on the list before. Oh, well, it might've been one that we've put on the list. So and, anyway, and now yeah, Amazon, so anyway, yeah. Amazon's doing Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. We don't know if it's if they're redoing the story from the books or if they're going to like the other books. We don't know. The sim- Cimmerillion, Cimmerillion is one of them. Cimmerillion. And then um, Tolkien's son has put out a couple of using his notes. Oh, uh, okay. About like the before era or whatever. Gotcha. I haven't read them. Young Gandalf. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's so much that. <laughs> like, I think there's like, they talk about like the Dark Lord before Sauron and all that stuff. Uh, anyway. Okay. Colbert would be able to talk about it easier than I could. I'm sure he could. <laughs> but yeah, um, they've already renewed it for a second season, and the show hasn't even come out yet. We don't even know who's playing what. Yeah, like... <laughs> they th- this is putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, uh, p- p- that is putting it lightly, yeah. As they might as well have said in the article, hey, Lord of the Rings got picked up for a second season, and by the way, there's also going to be a first season. <laughs> Like I know nothing about this show. I didn't know it. Ex- I didn't know it existed until this news. <laughs> so boy, I hope it's good. Yeah, or adequate. <laughs> I mean, the Hobbit trilogy was okay for the most part. I mean, it didn't strike lightning like a uh, like the first Lord of the Rings trilogy did. Well, that's what happens when you stretch one book into three books into right. into th- four movies. Three, three four? movies. Three movies. Three movies. It was three. Okay. They didn't even originally didn't want to do three movies. They were going to do two. Yeah. The first movie is half the book. Yeah. But then Peter Jackson comes back. Well, because what was it Guillermo del Toro? Something like dropped that. out. Yeah, something decided like decided he didn't want to do it. Or there was creative differences. I something. really don't. I don't really remember. But Peter Jackson says I don't. I I only work in trilogies, which is <laughs> stupid. That's. Mm. Yeah, just because you did choice. just because you did one super successful trilogy, mm-hmm. and then and the, you also did Dead Alive. Yeah, the Frighteners was, was pretty good. Did he do that movie? Oh yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, that was his first like big like. Oh, because I remember when he was pitching when he was pitching the chair for uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, he was worried that they had seen Dead Alive. Yeah, and they were going to tell him no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dead, Dead Alive is pretty good. Because it's bad. I mean, it's it is like well, it's that good kind of bad. It's like trauma almost. <laughs> it might as it may as well be the a Toxic Avenger esque movie, you know. But yeah, we we know like virtually nothing about this Lord of the Rings series from Amazon. Yeah, and it's and it's Amazon. They got the money to throw at it. Well, they're they picked it up for a second season because they're trying to capture that Game of Thrones void. Yeah, that that modern fantasy like. And it's going to backfire on them. 
because the I, I I have a feeling the Game of Thrones wave has ended. I I think that final season and more specifically those final what four or five episodes burnt people so badly on the the fantasy long form show well, that that they're going to be you know twice shy to like jump into another series. Yeah, but at the same time, I think people have a soft spot for the Lord of the Rings. Certain people do, but will those people this also guy. well, yeah. <laughs> but like are those people also going to sign up for Amazon Video just for the Lord of the Rings? I, mean, I don't think it's that much of a draw. I feel like most people in this day and age have Amazon Prime. Mm. Yeah. And they true. may not use the video cuz I I don't. There's only a handful of things on there I'd actually watch. There's a couple of, there's some really good documentaries on there. See, I don't really watch documentaries. Uh if you get a chance, watch Doomed. Oh yeah? Yeah. It is about the uh ninety four Roger Corman Ooh. Um, uh Fantastic Four. Neat. It is really, really well done. I love that movie. Yeah. It's a great <laughs> it's a great movie and the the, 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 the documentary great, one is one of the greatest movies that never that never existed. Yeah, the documentary is really eye opening about how Roger Corman um, operates his mm. his things, and I mean, eye opening in like not a bad way, but like, oh yeah, okay, he that makes sense, yeah, in a way, yeah, okay, hmm. but yeah, no, I I I guess you're right. I guess po- folks have video, but I mean, how many people who have Prime know they have Amazon Video, right? And like I said, I have it, I don't use it. Yeah, like the last time I think I remember got on there trying to watch something, half the stuff I wanted to watch was not available. Yeah, that's kind of the catch. Like I wanted to watch the man in the high castle. I, I mean, I do want to watch that, mm-hmm. but I'm also, I'm always a sucker for like alternate timeline, historical stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. What's that Chernobyl show on? I don't know. I kind of want to watch that too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there, but, but yeah. yeah, Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. which like I said, I don't think it's going to capture the, the heart like the la- like the previous ones did, mm-hmm. but also that was like the first major modern fantasy, like, that went that came from like a big studio in a very long time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. I mean, it was kind of first of its kind, that kind of thing. I mean, I wouldn't say first of its kind, but I like mean, for as big as it was. Oh yeah, and the amount, the the special like some of the some of the special effects they they did in that was like they were amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, as while we're recommending things on streaming, um, on Hulu, watch the first episode of Stumptown. It's very good if you like. Uh, um, kind of kind of dryly sarcastic uh procedurals hmm. about a um down and out like private investigator hmm. that constantly screws things up hmm. it's starring uh Colby Smulders I don't know who that is Maria Hill from the Marvel oh, movies okay, okay. as as a uh, um US army vet with PTSD hmm. that you know kind of bungles her way through solving crimes hmm. And also um, the guy from Almost Human. Do you remember Almost Human? Oh, I love that show. uh, Dorian, the robot. Oh, okay. He's a police officer, and it's set in uh, Portland. He was in a... That might be something like that. He was in a later season of... Oh, what was that weird show with the serial killer cult? And it had... um, I know the show you're talking about. I just can't think of the name of it. Yeah, he plays like a... The Following. That's what it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He but put, Dorian was in the following. Yeah, yeah, oh, right on. In like the, I want to say it's like the last season or the next, the last season. Mm, okay. He plays. Um, he's a him and his character's sister mm. are in the the cult of the serial killer because mm. after the serial killer dies, mm. there's like this cult that fills the void and like they have like this religious following of this guy's work or whatever. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The ending of the show. I'm mm-hmm. not going to spoil it or anything because even though it's an older show now is really good. Like it's okay. really interesting on how what they do with it. Okay, interesting. But uh same with uh, Stumptown. It's really good. Hmm. Um uh Colby Smolder's uh younger brother lives with her younger brother hmm. who has down syndrome and hmm. they actually cast a uh person with, uh, down person with downs as in oh. in a, a major supporting role and that's kind of really cool. That is good. I like that a lot. Yeah. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, back to news. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that Cats trailer? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) So the internet was once again assaulted with the musty smell of a new trailer for the film adaptation of Cats. Oh, man. It's it's like a nightmare. (laughs) I mean, listen, enjoy. You know, I don't want to I don't want to poo poo anything. If if that's your kind of thing, those musicals are your thing. 
great if if cats is your thing you know that's that's awesome but slapping real human faces on cgi cat bodies is it's horrifying everything visually in in these in these trailers for these movies it's like it's so weird yes i don't know what's weirder the fact that they are all cgi furries not say <laughs> again not you know not despair you know any you can be into what you're into but like i don't know the cgi part is the weird part it's weird it's it's and it's always, and it's always so weird because like they're all really small in these giant that's set the pieces. that's the other thing it's it i don't know what's worse What's weirder, the fact that they're CGI cat monstrosities or they're tiny CGI cat monstrosities? Like, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. The way they're doing it could open up some really interesting, uh, like adaptations of other things, like like the borrowers or something like that. Sure. I mean, this yeah, this technology can be used down the line for better films. <laughs> Here's the thing: cats as a whole. Just has a weird. It's a weird plot of a movie or of, of a story. Yeah, and it's just weird. And like Idris Elba's character, mm-hmm. he's almost like a Cheshire Cat type thing. Like, yeah, does he, he have magic powers? Like, like I, I've never actually watched Cats, and I never read anything that the cat stuff is taken from. I read the Wikipedia page, <laughs> and everything <laughs> that I read makes it sound like it's a weird cat death cult. Because <laughs> like they're like. The whole deal is they're picking a cat to go to like to ascend to like the higher plane or whatever. And it's like all of the cats coming in and stating their like case for being chosen. Like to prove their worth or whatever. Yeah. And like, but the end of the play, at least from what I read, heavily implies that it's like a ceremony to kill one of the cats. See, like when I was watching the trailer and they're talking about all this stuff, I couldn't tell if they're talking about going to heaven or. Or getting adopted and becoming a house cat. Maybe both? I don't know. It's 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 an odd one and like And there's so many big names in this film. Oh, there's there's quite a few people attached to this. And like Judy Dench. Judy Dench is the only one that really looks like she fits with <laughs> like because they gave her the giant like Fur mink coat. coat her coat kind of thing so yeah. her her character actually looks like it kind of fits like but this trailer it sure does try to trick the viewer into thinking that there's a plot <laughs> an overarching plot to this movie where again the the play I'm, i just mentioned that it kind of has a an end goal but like from, from the way it seems to me is that there is like no nothing it's a it's like a seinfeld episode it's a play about nothing <laughs> and things just kind of happen <laughs> But it could be worse. They could be doing a live action film adaptation of the other Andrew Lloyd Webber play that came out around this time where everyone is sentient space trains on roller skates. <laughs> Look up Starlight Express. Oh, man. I only know about this because of a couple of podcasts that explained Starlight Express <laughs> because it is... You want to talk about a if you think Cats has no discernible plot and is just off the wall ideas. There are two trains that fall in love and they actually call themselves trains. They're not people. They are trains. No matter what it looks like on the stage, they are roller skate trains. Thomas the Tank Engine got weird. Yeah. Yeah, sure did. Uh. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what I think maybe really bothers me about the cats, like in the in this movie. Sure, what's up? It is an entire cast of Mike Myers, the Cat in the Hat. <laughs> no, Mike Myers looks even more like a cat because A. Leafs gave him the cat nose. These these homunculi have like human faces. I think they have slightly catish faces. They have cat eyes and ears. <laughs> <sighs> I don't want to see this movie. I'm going to have to see this movie. I don't want to. Because we've talked about it too much. We've uh, got to know. Morbid curiosity. And it's you a, know what they say about curiosity. It kills the cat. Uh, hey, Josh, it kills the cat. <laughs> oh. oh, Lord. Slow news week, folks. Slow news week. All right. All right. Well, hey, guess what? 
We did it. We did it. We made it to the end of the show. Here. Yeah. All right. Hey, you have been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram at Nerd Overload Now. You can email the show at staff at nerdoverload.com. Uh, we're also on YouTube, uh, at least for the time being. Uh, do a search for Nerd Overload TV. Uh, we are also on various podcast catchers like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. If you like the show and you want to support us, we do have a Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash nerd overload now. That's right. You can go over there and um, you know help support the show. If you like the show, if you want to get out a few days early, you can always, uh, you know, you can do that. That's pretty cool. We have t-shirts. We do have t-shirts. Just go to Nerd Overload, click the store page. You can check out some of our designs. And I want to thank David Pencil for the use of our intro and outro. You can find more of his stuff at davidpencil.com. And again, thank you all for tuning in. And we will be back next week. Pizza out. Pizza out.